keep the order and welfare by it. Why do y'all look so sad? <laughs> Everybody looking sad. Smile and be happy you're alive for another day. Uh, I need a motion for the approval of the agenda. Make a motion we approve the agenda. Okay. Hearing a bill from Roberta Green to administer Roberta Green Garrett for the season to start. I'm going to turn it over to our attorney to conduct this. Very good. Uh, Mr. Mayor, we have, um, as you noted, just one item on the agenda tonight that is an appeal. What we need to point out to you is this is not a public hearing by the normal standards. This is on the record, and so public comment is not going to be listed this time. The council has received all of the filings that have been made thus far in the in Ms. Green Garrett's um, filings for her demolition permit. Uh, they also have received a full transcript of the hearing before the Historic Preservation Commission. Thus. Uh, their duty tonight is to look at that transcript, the materials on the record, listen to Mr. Holman's argument this evening, and then decide whether there is an abuse of discretion by the Historic Preservation Commission. If they elect, if they decide there's an abuse of discretion, they have two options. They can remand the matter back, or they can modify, modify the decision of the Historic Preservation Commission. They can also affirm it if they find that there's no abuse of discretion. Thus, uh, right now we will begin with Mr. Holman's presentation. Thank you. <coughs> Gentlemen, I appreciate y'all allowing us to appear before you. Uh, I was asked about the easel. Uh, we brought the information available. If y'all have any questions and want to see anything in particular, we just want to make sure we were ready where we didn't have to tell y'all we got to stop and run back to our truck and get that for you. This issue, as Mr. Parks just pointed out, is about the Certificate of Appropriateness for Demolition. And I point that out because there's seven criteria under Section 6.2 of your Historic District Guidelines. And I'm going to go through those with you. But the focus throughout, it feels like throughout, from the applicant's perspective, throughout the whole process, the entire focus has been on what will come after, what are the plans after. And not only on what are the plans after, but that the plans for what would go if the demolition is approved is just too big. That's the effect of what we've faced as we've gone through this process. We want to focus on the seven criteria that justify the demolition. Now, I also mentioned that the size of what is proposed to be put back after demolition has been uh, a constant uh, comment and focus as we went through the Historic Preservation Commission. But on page 7, at the very introduction of your Historic District Guidelines, this is the phrase that's in y'all's ordinance, it's in y'all's guidelines. Guidelines are not intended to restrict or limit construction or reconstruction in terms of use or size, but to offer design guidance to ensure the integrity of Dahlonega's historic presence. Also, your guidelines in the introductory paragraph on page 9 says the purpose is to provide an objective basis for review to ensure consistency and fairness. And I'm going to address that phrase as we go through at least one of these criteria that has been given as a reason for denying the application as presented by the Historic Preservation Commission. We have been in the seven criteria that are listed under section 6.2 are as follows. The historic scenic or architectural significance of the building, structure, site, tree, or object. That's number one. 
The historic significance that's been presented and that upon which the Historic Preservation Commission rendered their decision is a concrete block. That's all that's cited as to what is significant. And in your own guidelines, you specifically say that you cannot under, put up a concrete block fence, that that's strongly discouraged. But yet we're to believe that this application should be denied because of a concrete block building that isn't there. I mean, y'all know it's not concrete block. It was so historically and archeologically significant that in 1985, the city approved putting siding over that concrete block. Item B is the importance of the building, structure, site, tree, or object to the ambiance of the district. That's what the guideline is. Let's compare that to the intent of these guidelines is to ensure, is to provide an objective basis for review. So on the ambiance of the district, I believe that if we were to ask everybody in this room what is ambiance of the district mean, you are going to get all different subjective answers. The, the objective criteria to control that element or that criteria for the certificate for demolition simply has not been established and it's, it's based upon subjective criteria. Even the report, y'all have these reports that the city commissioned. Now the city commissioned these reports. It wasn't, uh, didn't come from us and it, it came well after the plan review so we weren't given an opportunity to discuss it on July the 6th at the plan review before the historic commission came August the 16th. But here's the phrase that says this is ambiance that's in that report. The simpler and understated vernacular structure. That's the part of history. I don't even know what that phrase means. The simpler and understated vernacular structure based upon a concrete block. Again, that was so significant that it was covered in 1985 with permits from the city. The third criteria is the difficulty or impossibility of rep reproducing such a building, structure, site, tree, or object because of its design, texture, material, detail, or unique location. Again, a concrete block is all that's identified as supporting this factor to deny this application. Four, whether the building, structure, site, tree, or object is one of the last remaining examples of its kind in the district. There's, there's not even a contention as from the city to deny this application that, that that fourth criteria justifies denying this application. Five, whether there are definite plans for use of the property if the proposed demolition is carried out and what the effect of those plans on the character of the surrounding area would be. I'll take the first part before the and. Yes, there are definite plans for the use of the property if it's carried out. We get to the other side of that, the other half of the and, the effect of those plans on the character of the surrounding area. Well, we heard a lot at the public hearings with people speaking, and, and I respect, we respect their opinions, but a lot of that addressed uh, Ms. Green and uh, Garrett individually and, and expressing a dislike expressing concerns about the business plan of the use of a hotel and other factors like that, people expressing an opinion. I submit to you that the effect of those plans on the character of the surrounding area is controlled by your ordinance and what your ordinances say. You draft ordinances that provide specific guidelines for the character of the surrounding area. Furthermore, those are plans that would be addressed as for def there's definite plans for use of the property, but as to those specific plans, can those be addressed even if you grant the certificate of demolition? By all means. And that's where we go to the specific design criteria within your historic preservation ordinance. 
but that should not result in a denial of a certificate of de demolition. The next criteria is whether reasonable measures can be taken to save the building structure, site tree, or object from collapse. The contractors that were retained by the city that did not appear for the plan review on July the 6th but submitted reports six weeks thereafter acknowledge that their report is based upon a visual survey of portions of the building, not all the building, and that no demolition, that is, they didn't dig into the building to reveal the existing conditions, and significantly, if you <coughs> read those reports, the authors of those reports state this, they can in no way guarantee that all conditions were observed. In contrast, the information submitted by the applicant is that reasonable measures cannot be taken to save this building from collapse, the Butler Piazza building. And then number seven, whether the building structure, site tree, or object is capable of earning a reasonable economic return on its value. First of all, again, the guidelines are not intended by definition, to limit or restrict construction in terms of use or size, but merely to offer guidance for how the building <coughs> will appear. But the economic report that was submitted to the city, and then there was statements in the transcript that you have from the appearance before the HPC, those rent rates are higher than the regional rent rates within Delano. They don't make a provision for an occupancy rate. It failed to include certain expenses. And the individual said, well, but I put a 15% contingency in my report and that ought to address those issues. I submit a 15% contingency is there in case you missed one of your estimates. Not to take into account uh, the specific expenses that ought to be included when you're addressing this item that's a specific guideline. The, furthermore, the uh, information that was submitted, that we submitted on behalf of the applicant shows that there's not a reasonable economic return on investment. We even got into a discussion about what does that phrase mean? And one of the HPC members was taking into account, well, what's the interest rate that you would be charged? That's just an expense. That's part of the expense you've got to pay as you go forward when you're owning or maintaining a, a project or a building. But that is not the return on investment. So it, it was simply a misunderstanding of how to apply that term. This has been a, a uh, process from the applicant's perspective that for whatever reason has turned adversarial. It's been frustrating because part of what we have seen in the reports delivered by city staff in, in reports, the fact that the city retained individuals to provide reports on the eve of appearances before boards, uh, we were supposed to appear on August the 25th and we get these reports that are dated August the 16th. The plans, we filed the application in November of last year, the final plans were submitted May the 29th, and we had a plan review meeting on July the 6th. And we get uh, those reports that come in, not to review reports that Roger DuBois or anybody else has submitted on behalf of the applicant, but to take an overall review of what could be done there. Just step in the property owner's shoes and say, here's what here's what can be done. Um, we, we feel like it's, it's setting up to say, well, we refute you, and that's just tough from the applicant's perspective because it's the city. We're trying to follow the city's ordinances. We've got to appear before the city, but when the city goes out and hires experts and hires an architect to make a drawing, then we're coming back before you, but yet the city is hiring these individuals to present information to contradict what the applicant has submitted. Not to review with the applicant, not to review with the applicant's 
uh, experts that we've brought forward, but to bring up a whole new report. And it's even more frustrating because as we went through the process, when Roberta first filed for the certificate of appropriateness for demolition, she did meet with staff. She understood it was the parks building that was the issue, not this Butler Piazza building. She understood it was included. We understand that it wasn't now. We had to come forward. But when we went through the process and, try, and hearing what the community was saying and saying, can you make it smaller? We applied for variances. And during that process, at one point, we said, well, if you won't grant us a variance that we're requesting on the number of parking spaces, what would you use? What variance would you allow? And I, I give kudos where they are owed. Bob Conaway, the chairman of the board that addresses variances, told us, I think we should. I think we should try to inform the applicant of what that board, at least, uh, would be willing to consider. But the report we were given was, we're not going to design your building for you. But yet when Roger Dubois, after he's turned in plans May the 29th, shows up for a plan review on July the 6th with the Historic Preservation Commission, Lo and behold, there in fact is an entire design for what could be built on that building. So no longer was it, we won't tell you how many variant, what kind of variants we'll give to you on parking, design the whole building for us. But that was the first he saw. And when we asked why weren't the expert reports, all the other information, why wouldn't we bring that to a plan review? Isn't that the purpose of a plan review to say to the applicant, here's some issues that we think you ought to address before we go forward and vote on it. And instead, it's in your uh, transcript. On page 91, Historic Preservation Commission told us that the purpose of that plan review is to provide input from those members and comment from them on the design to tell the uh, applicant, here's what we'd like to see from you. Not based upon these guidelines, because if it had been based upon these guidelines, we would have had these various expert reports that we could review before then and go over those in detail at the plan review. This property, gentlemen, when you, when you read the reports, the, the zoning is a specific permitted use. Hotels are permitted in this district. But the reports that are given from the from city staff, a lot of the report that takes up a good part of your transcript goes over the specific use being a hotel. But you've already addressed that. You've put it in your zoning ordinance that we can do a hotel. But what, do, what does the city say to us? Well, if you don't like the text of our ordinances and you're going to be applying for something, then you need to ask the mayor and council to change the ordinance it comes across to the applicant that the citizens are here to serve the government. That's the way it comes across. As opposed to that if the city will draft the ordinances and we submit that you have. And we've tried our dead level best to comply with your ordinances. And one of the items that's reported in those reports is why when you bought the property didn't you come meet with staff to see if staff would say yes we think you can do what you want to do with that property. What about this? Which is what we did. Why don't we read the ordinances that the city's already adopted because that tells us what the city will allow us to do with that property. And if we do it that way, we say you can build a hotel. And then we've got to meet your building code uh, requirements because we've got into a lot of discussion if you read all those reports about the height of the building. Okay? But that's not an issue for a demolition certificate. When is that an issue? When Roberta Green Garrett steps in and files an uh, application for a building permit, she's got to meet those requirements. And if she doesn't, you can't build it. You'll have to build something different. But that's not a criteria here, and we'll follow the ordinances. This property, when you read the historic significance, what's set forth there, we go back to 1904 and it burned. And then it's set for 43 years as a cabbage patch. And if you really want to look at it, 
That's the longest period of time that this property was used for any one item that's recited in the report is a cabbage patch. Because then from 47 to 85, these architecturally significant concrete blocks were put on that building. And then they were covered over in 85, and that's the way it sits. We have some procedural matters that we also preserve. The plans were final May the 29th. We had a plan review July the 6th. The ordinances say the HPC is to render a decision within 45 days. We were not able to have a meeting on August the 25th because your HPC couldn't get a quorum. And the reason they couldn't get a quorum is because one of your HPC members announced a conflict on August the 25th. Your ordinances say that if they have a conflict, they're prohibited from considering the application. And, and while this application was pending, we didn't just sit back and wait to be told, here's what we need to do or here's when your meetings are. There were inspections of that building. Members of the HPC came to those inspections. It was under consideration at least from May until August, and we submit from November through August that it was under consideration. And so procedurally, anything that happened up till August the 25th, we submit has been tainted, and, and for that reason, their decision is invalid. The evidence has been presented. We're here only for the certificate of appropriateness for demolition. We meet the seven criteria as we've just gone through, and for that reason, we ask you to overturn the decision of the HPC. We are here to answer any questions y'all may have. Any questions from the council? Mr. Holmes, I have a question. Um, the last time you were here, uh, which was to discuss the parks building, uh, which we overturned and made that decision to, to demolition, to demo that building, you presented, and, and, and part of the record was a much smaller structure that included the buffer building. Why was there a change to that plan? They, they were, came back to, when that was done to present, let me preface this first by in discussing that with the architect, Mr. Bailey, it was here, his understanding that whatever plan was submitted would have to be a final plan to be approved before the demolition could occur. And it was his understanding that he would continue to work through the plans to try to get those approved if the demolition was uh, approved, which is which it was. We, he was unable to provide sufficient parking uh, based upon the plan that he had at that time. Now, it's been represented that the plan showed only 36, 38 rooms, whatever it may be. Uh, in talking with Mr. Bailey and with Roberta, it was always their understanding that it would be between 50 and 60 uh, rooms within that structure, within that hotel. But we were unable to get the necessary uh, building permit specifications met, so that's when they applied for the variances so that they could finally design the building. But that was why they were unable to uh, construct under the building regulations what the code required of the city. And so we heard about variances and saw the reaction. That's when we withdrew a number of the variances and then this body denied the balance. So again, we, they were unable to build uh, what Mr. Bailey had understood he'd be able to build. So the, but the original plan was between 50 and 60 rooms and now the plan is 75. Yes, because he believed, he reasonably believed variances could be approved so they could build that size building. We still may be able to, if we got to that point, be able to make it render it smaller, and we're still working on that. But in order to move forward with a plan, because that demolition had been approved, um, the only way to do it was to build the parking deck. Yeah, the question is, uh, I'd like to follow up, Mr. Holman. Um, just follow up with what kind of what uh, Roman said. And recalling the original request included restoration of the use of the Butler Building now being sought for demolition. So, what's changed? I, I, 
say two things. One, uh, Roberta always understood that there was not an issue with this Butler uh, Piazza building as far as demolition. The issue was the Parks building, so she did not understand that uh, that would be an issue about having it, getting a certificate on it. Uh, but they just were unable to incorporate the current building into any sort of reasonable design and they couldn't go forward with it. One of the things that you mentioned uh, that's taken a lot of attention uh, by us and the community deals with the size of the structure now. Yes. It started off, as Roman said, as a small boutique hotel incorporating the existing Butler building as we recollect. And could you explain how you see uh, a three to four story building such as the one currently presented, at least the last one that we saw, uh, does not end with the design on the front of that building, which appears from what we've seen to be relatively blah in terms of brick, not much, some change in the color of the brick, but it doesn't seem to represent the historic character of the square or of the block or two on either side of the square that we've seen demonstrated in other cities that we visited. Uh, this council has been on annual retreats to Rome, Georgia. We've been on annual retreats to Madison, Georgia. And we've said to ourselves, this kind of new hotel that was purchased and, and built in those locations would be perfect here. And yet, I think one of the things that I'm hearing is we've just been awarded as a city in 2016 the Great American Main Street Award. We'd like to make sure that as we look forward to the structures that are going to be on that square or on a couple of blocks adjacent to it, that it's going to maintain that quaint, historic look. And so that's been one of the issues that has seemingly changed two or three times over the last year and a half, that we would like to have your team revisit. And that's why, as a city, it's not our job to hire an architect and to present plans. If I was the owner, I'd be upset. You know, why are you trying to run my business? Why are you telling me what to do? And I think the spirit of us doing that and the staff doing that was to represent how important this is to us, that we want to make sure it's done properly. We're tired of, a, of two blocks of light in our city for the last couple of years. We'd like to see this move forward. We're as frustrated as you are in terms of how long this process has taken. But you stated in your, in your presentation um, how you want to work with us, how you, I remember coming to, you came to us with several requests for variances which were denied over the part of this. So at one point it's like you want to work with us and you understand what our ordinance are and you've, you're, you've reviewed those and yet you come to us asking us to change those and give exceptions. So there's been a lot of back and forth and so forth. I think the best thing we can do now is, is to try to say, all right, what the history is the history. We are where we are. How can we open the channels of communication and move this process forward? And it seems to me that in, going back to the original thoughts of somehow incorporating the Butler building in the design the process of the hotel, uh, and making it of a size that fits in with the demographics of what's in our city would uh, probably be best received by the citizens and by this council in terms of what we're looking for. And I appreciate that. And we, we would we welcome that an opportunity to uh, have to look over the items rather than feeling ambushed at meetings. So that if we, if you were, if if this council is saying to us, review the plan that was submitted at a plan review, which we understood that we were going to essentially get expert reports um, and see what y'all can do with that, starting with that plan, we're happy to do that. Um, but rather than the city saying you either build this or you'll be denied was the way it came across. Secondly, incorporating the uh, Piazza building, 
I don't understand that you're saying we want a concrete block building. I mean, if we're sitting here being criticized for having three type, three color brick, then we're also hearing, so instead of that, we want a concrete block building. So preserve this concrete block on the Piazza building and put concrete block where the Butler building is. We'd prefer that over three sets. That, that's the way that's communicated to us. So by all means, we would be happy to review uh, with staff, with mayor and council, uh, any specifics about a, a plan, but, we, but when we work through it, when our people work through it, they said we cannot salvage that building at a reasonable cost. And so we, we just don't, we'll keep working at it. And it sounds like that's not the critical issue of salvaging that specific building. The critical issue, again, is how large will the replacement building be? And if that's the case, then yes, we'll, we'll review plans and, and start with what was submitted to the HPC and as much as that as we incorporate, we'll try to do. I, I appreciate what you said and I don't have a question, but I look at it as that's later. Yes. The planning and yes. zoning and what's going to go on that property is later. Tonight is the demolition. N yes. So we're kind of mixing things up and I agree with the future of what Councilman Larson and you both say is that we can work on what's going to go there. Yes. But tonight is a different, different yes. subject. Mr. Hoffman, that's where I've been coming from. We just spent, if you read those reports and read what's in the staff reports, read, frankly, what was the, the transcript from HPC, a large percentage of it uh, addressed what's going to go back there and whether it should even be used as a hotel. But that that's already addressed. So we're on the same sheet of music here is that if we if the demolition is approved then we acknowledge we've got to meet the criteria for whatever goes back and we, we certainly want to keep it open. Roger's been working on that through the day and, and is coming up with uh, other alternatives. He's, we've heard what has been said. Uh, this thing's too damn big. You know, there's something y'all can do and, and we're working at it but the feasibility of the project always comes into play. So, yes, Mr. Holman, just one other comment. I think in the spirit of moving this forward, the more things we can do to, uh, to listen, to build trust with one another, uh, to hold meetings so you don't feel ambushed and so forth is something that we need to make sure that we do. You indicated in your 20 minute presentation how frustrated you are with the city at times and how we seem to have been a roadblock here. And yet, looking at the other side of that equation, as most of us know that have been around six decades or more, uh, there's two sides to every story. And we've witnessed some very inappropriate um, signage issues and so forth from your client that I don't think speaks to cooperation and working together as partners in trying to complete this project, which I think both your team and your client and we would like to see completed. And I hope as we move forward that we don't see any of that kind of um, communication conveyed and that you'll feel comfortable in working with us uh, to partner and see this process completed. Yes. And, and, and I'm not anti-lawyer, but when both sides lawyer up, it makes it difficult for us to, to get involved. And, and, and you guys know that. I mean, and technically, as a council, we we have empowered HPC to make those decisions and to, to work with your client and, and you on those designs. And that's what that's what the preservation ordinance does. That's what the HPC does. They are empowered to make decisions, and their decisions are binding unless someone appeals. And when they appeal to us, we have to look at whether they abuse the discretion that the power that the, that we have empowered them to use. Uh, and so that's that's our role. When we're looking at this demoli demolition, we have to look at well, did they abuse their power or not? And if they and if they didn't, uh, we have to, we should always if they didn't just uh, you know side with their decision and approve their decision. Uh, but I think there's a willingness to work. And and some of the things you talked about about 
you know, the course being delayed. So I find that unacceptable personally. And I don't think the city should do that. We should we should be timely in what we give you, and you should have enough time to prepare. Um, so hopefully we'll do that going forward. I think there's a spirit of collaboration that we want to get this done, uh, that we want to have uh, not two blocks of, or two buildings of, of blight in our city on Main Street. It's not it's not becoming uh, what we have. And that, and that, I appreciate that. And all I can say is that that was where we felt like there was an abuse of discretion is that the Historic Preservation Commission seemed to be considering a whole lot more than the seven criteria that, that y'all have put in the ordinance that are to be considered. They seem to be considering uh, zoning issues uh, and just contradicting the ordinance because the ordinance says you're not to consider uh, use or size. And that seemed to be everything, everything other than the seven criteria seemed to be the uh, controlling factors. And then when we got to return on investment, and the whole issue is, well, what's the interest rate you're going to get on the loan, which is really not an issue addressing return on investment. So um, those were just some of the, those were many of the factors that we felt like we ran into. And, and, and design is obviously in the eye of the whole Right. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, and so, you know, when I look around town and I see the, the structures that are in town, the, the structure that's missing is that, Post World War II or pre World War II retail building. That that building was. Um, I don't know if that, that that makes, but that's the one thing that's missing. Uh, from a lot of towns in North Georgia that you see, you'll see that dime store, dime store storefront. And, and I can't speak for the HPC members about what you know what they were doing when they were looking at that, and what they or what their opinions were, or what their I mean, all I know what their decision was. Um, no, and I understand, and that's what I'm saying is that, that if, if, if we're going to say, okay, you've got to pull off that siding, number one, that block is going to have holes in it, but if that's what we want is, a, is that structure as well as the parks building to be a uh, concrete block, and that, don't, that will meet the criteria of the historic guidelines, I submit it would not, that your own guidelines say that's not acceptable. But that's what we're being told. They strip it back. That's the only thing of historic significance well, about think, this building. I, well, yeah, I think there, you could say strip it back, or you could say, you know, refurbish the inside and the outside. Is, I mean, you wouldn't have to. I'm not saying you have to strip it back. I don't know. That, I mean, but I, I get the report indicating that restoring it to its original condition is, is what was ideal. Um, so, I mean, I. There's a, I think there's a lot of wiggle room or a lot of negotiating uh, that can occur. We, I agree with you. There's a lot of negotiating, but they specifically said that the siding, the experts retained by the city, said the siding should have never been put on. In fact, he said that was a cardinal mistake. Was his phrase was that the city should not have approved that siding being put on that block, he said in 1997, it was actually in 1985. Um, well, none of us are on the council. I know. <laughs> <laughs> nobody, nobody asked me when I was So I don't think it came before uh, the council. I think it was something that was done at the staff level. My only point is that was the only thing of historic significance, was that we couldn't do it if you were going to leave siding on. <coughs>
in favor of the motion, raise your hand. Motion carried. Make a motion, we adjourn. Second. Motion and second, we adjourn. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Motion adjourned.